London Film and Comic Con had all of the modern doctors. And some of the old ones. Including that one. Hello, cult members. Welcome to the Pop Culture Cult. I'm Sean. I'm Janice. Look, I did it right this time. Yay. And we would like to make a huge, big, gigantic announcement. Yeah. I didn't tell you this. Oh. What are we announcing? This is the big show. We do a... T- I've been looking for a reason for a name for our our longer talk conversation or whatever. Yeah. And as an homage to ESPN and the big show that used to be going on with uh, <laughs> Keith Overman and Dan Patrick, we're going to be the big... Sh- this is going to be the big show. We're just going to... All right. Wasn't wasn't that a wrestler, too? The big, the big show is... Uh, Paul White, yeah. yeah, yeah, homage to him too. Sure, a uh, huge D and D head. Apparently, he goes in games with uh, Joe Maganello <laughs> and that whole group. Of course, um, fucking nerds. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so this is the big show, and we're gonna start calling it the big show from now on. And we're gonna start um, trying to do um, actual like titles to our each of our episodes. Oh wow! And that way, maybe when people search some shit, they'll see our stuff that wow, pops up. Wow, you're just I'm I'm trying to expand our brand. Follow us, uh, and so we're gonna be talking about the James Gunn stuff this week. I said we weren't gonna do it until some more stuff came out. Some more stuff came out, so we're gonna talk about that, and that's gonna be the big thing in this episode. But we got some other stuff. But first, before we, after our big announcement, bum, ba, da, da. <laughs> is anybody surprised we're calling it the Big Show? I mean, come on, it's the really big shoe. It's a really big shoe. Uh, it's it's the show that we spend the most time doing stuff, so it has to be called yeah. The Big Show, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, while you're here, first off, thank you for clicking on The Big Show. And uh, second, if you um, aren't already, please subscribe to this channel. We do this, um, you know, we talk about, we want to talk about stuff we want to talk about with people on the internets. And so we ask that you... you we don't do a Patreon, not yet, at least, and um, <laughs> and you know, dreams. We have dreams and aspirations. Uh, but all we ask is that you subscribe to the channel, uh, give our episodes a watch, and then if you would please share with all your friends. That's, we're not asking for the world. We're not asking you to give us five dollars a month or anything like that. Not yet, at least. And uh, but just you know, subscribe to our channel. Tell your friends. That's all you ask. Right. That's not do what he said. That's not. I don't think I'm asking for too much. Right. Not yet. <laughs> okay, so let's get into this week's big show. Um, this is episode seventy-two, by the way. We've done seventy-two-ish of these. That's kind of surprising to 72. me. Seventy-two. <clears throat> so it came out. Uh, when was that? Thursday. Yeah. Thursday. Thursday. Friday. Friday. That the uh, Disney buyout of twenty-first Century Fox has been approved by the shareholders. Um, now, this has been rumored about and talked about and everything for a while. Some of it has been delayed because they were waiting for the um, uh, the AT&T mer- uh, merger with Time Warner. And that right. was under a court case, and they were trying to figure out if it was a monopoly, and they were right. doing all that stuff. Right. And so they were waiting for that decision. They decided that that was not a monopoly. And so there was Comcast came in a couple times and tried to – you know, sneak some stuff in and, and right. try to buy Fox. <laughs> Offer more money, except, well, it's Disney. So they're just going to. Uh, this keep deal popping. has been done, done at the corporate level for, I think, a year and a half. Yeah. They've just been yeah. waiting for stuff and they had to get the yeah. shareholders. Yep. And then Comcast is like, wait, 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 we've got cash. And, <laughs> and Fox is like, oh, it, if that's not what we're worried about. <laughs> Disney whips out the mouse dick and says, don't you know who we are? <laughs> the Disney black card. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they had a shareholders meeting on Friday. Um, uh, both uh, the Fox shareholders and the Disney shareholders had separate meetings within the same hotel um, in New York. Okay. Um, both meetings lasted less than 15 minutes. <laughs> do you? Yes. Do you? Yes. I now pronounce you... A mega, a mega, yeah. mega company. The, uh, I was reading the Variety article while I was doing notes for the show, and they were talking about um, one person and one um, was asking if they were going to move the offices from Burbank, um, the Disney offices, corporate offices from Burbank to something else. And um, that was the only question that was brought up. 
and then the other one um, was from the f- from the Disney one from the Disney panel uh, uh, panel uh, <laughs> from the Disney uh, meeting. meeting. And that one was one guy got up and said uh, seventy one mil- billion dollars is too much. Uh, Fox isn't worth that much. We should have spent, you know, fifty five billion or right. whatever the original was. Right. And then he said his piece, and he went over, and he voted yes anyway. So, <laughs> uh, well, yeah, it's not going to matter. So the, I don't think it has to be unanimous. No, no. And um, so. they were even saying that um, the Fox, the Fox, it was the Fox meeting only had like fifty major shareholders at the meeting, hmm. and Disney had more because they have more major shareholders. Yeah. Um, but they had more in their meeting. But for the most part, it was. A pre- it was, like I said, it was 15 minutes on yeah. both meetings. And, yeah. and they just like, okay, anybody yeah. opposed greatly? And nobody, there was a f- lawsuit at one point in time. But yeah, um, but I guess that got kind of kicked under the. Uh, I don't know. They gave him a billion dollars and he went away. Yeah, well, whatever. Um, so really, uh, this means a ton for. Movie franchises and X Men's going to Marvel and and the streaming service for Disney and all that other stuff. It also means w- a lot for people who work within the industry, and you know, there are going to be major layoffs. I mean, there's going to be, you know, those could be people, you know, three people doing the same job. Redundancy, yeah. 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 So and then just you know the questions about, um, you know, uh, our next topic, and you know, are there people that I mean, there's Fox movies that may not be what Disney considers, you know, Disney wholesome. Right, or right. people that have done or said things, and so... I'm interested to see how they handle that. Um, I, I feel... I, I have no basis of this, you know, for this speculating responsibly, as the guys at Force Center would say. Um, I, have, I have no basis for this, but I feel that Disney buying of 21st Century Fox, that nothing is really going to change for Fox. Not much changed when Marvel got bought, Marvel Studios got bought. Not much changed when Disney, I mean, there were some people that lost their jobs and they did some reshuffling of, you know, stuff. And the same thing with Pixar. But they've all been left kind of to their own devices. Yeah. You make your thing, yeah. you know, kind of thing under the, um, under the umbrella of Disney. Yeah. So but that, then they came in and you know fired somebody under the marvel umbrella so i mean right right and we're gonna get into that that's james gunn stuff we're gonna get into that for in a minute but i feel like this is maybe a decision for them that they can do those maybe edgier r-rated that kind of stuff under the fox umbrella and still kind of keep it separate but still kind of be in control it, this, I don't know. I ev- guess we'll see. This deal, everybody keeps talking about how this deal is. It's about the X Men, and it's about bringing X Men back to Marvel and the Fantastic Four. And that has nothing to do with it. The the two big things out of this is the streaming service, and um, the two um, production companies out of Europe. Those are the major pieces here for Disney, because everything that Fox Twenty First Century Fox owns is now going to be Disney, and they could put it on their streaming service and no right. place else. Right, which broadens their library, which is what some of the, like the CBS um, All Access or whatever, right, and, right. you know, some of those are going to struggle or are struggling with, because if you don't have a decent library, nobody's going to pay, whatever, 10 bucks a month to and, watch one it, show. And uh, I know that they're going to do... Um, Clone Wars on the Disney streaming service and they're going to do a live action thing. They'll probably do some smaller budget um, movies on there too. Well, they talked about taking all the um, Disney Vault stuff out too and putting it on there. Yeah, yeah. Now, initially when they announced it, I'm like, I'm not really interested in the Disney stuff and then they started announcing, hey, there's there's this this Star Wars (laughs) thing and this Star Wars thing. Yes, you are. And (laughs) now, guess what? (laughs) Um, So yeah, so that's really what the main part of the deal is for. All the other stuff is kind of I won't say secondary, but not nearly as important. Yeah, they wouldn't have paid this kind of money just to get the X Men under, you know, under right. the Marvel umbrella. Yeah, or it just doesn't make any sense to no. spend seventy billion dollars. So, yeah. um, we are now going to do. We're going to talk about the James Gunn stuff. Now we've 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 been waiting to ho- to talk about it. 
Um, we try very hard to be positive around here. We're, we'll critique stuff that we feel that needs to be critiqued, but we try not to be negative. Right. We try. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm always good at it. I'll call up Bull when I when I see it. Um, but what's going on with James Gunn? Um, I know I'm going to say this out loud, but if you haven't heard about what's going on with James Gunn, um, come out from under the rug. Yeah, um, I I know we don't watch the news anymore, but I don't know what's going it's on. It's all with James. over the place. Yeah. Um, so uh, we uh, uh, about two weeks ago, ish ten 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 days. Um, it came out that James Gunn had some hmm, off color, inappropriate. Uh, off color is probably the better way of putting it. Tweets from like eight, ten years ago. Yeah. That resurfaced um, and be, by um, a gentleman who is an alt right, ultra conservative blogger who has been on a crusade. To go after Hollywood, Hollywood specifically after what happened with Roseanne Barr and a lot of the other stuff that, you know, a lot of Hollywood doesn't like our current president. Um, that's not what this conversation is about. And uh, and so the this gentleman went back and found these tweets and they're they're off color and they're bad jokes, but they're not directed towards anybody. And it's talking about raping kids and stuff. And, you know, I. People compl have complained about the tweets themselves and saying that he's a pedophile and all this stuff. And I'm like, I read the tweets, and they're they're blue. I mean, they're they're off color. They're that's what they are. But they're 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 not that bad, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry. We can make jokes about 9/11 and the Holocaust. This is not we. There's not this. This is not a line that's like there's. <laughs> he didn't cross some invisible line. Now, if you now if he's showing pictures or if there's evidence of him going out and doing this stuff, then there's a different conversation to be had there. Yeah. Harvey Weinstein, <laughs> Kevin Spacey. There's a difference there, right? Uh, this was more of just, you know, a, a guy who, and it, it, to his own admission, was very counterculture, very... Yeah. He was trying to be provocative and yeah and yeah thought that was gonna do it and it really kind of backfired and, but and it did for a little while but there's only a certain there's only a certain place you can kind of take that right and but the big thing is uh, regardless it was a long time ago and it's actually already come up it came up before they shot the first guardian was it the first one yeah. or the second one okay and everybody agreed that, you know, it was something he did in the past. He has apologized, you know, on like publicly on social media. And that's not the kind of person then I am. Then and now, like both times. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, several years ago and then it comes up again. And now, you know, there's been some question like, oh, well, now after he's had two big hits and made Disney some money. Now they're like, uh, well, it's come up again, right, and right. Eh, we'll get rid of you right, now. Right, and that's and <laughs> I, it's, I've I've been pretty vocal on our social media about supporting James Gunn. Yeah, a and and I feel like this is this is the other end of the politically correct view of the world right now. Should we be addressing the Me Too movement and the treating of minorities and women? And should we be having that conversation? Yes. Um, but there's a point where going and going after everybody who's ever said anything ever on social media is going too far. And well, and, and people, you know, they're like, well, why is this different than what happened with Roseanne Barr? Well, the big difference is that she's doing it right now in the culture that is and going directing on it directly at somebody at somebody yeah right and then just continued to when people started pointing it out just continued to start making it worse i mean james gunn from what i've seen came out and said 
yeah, they had every right to fire me. It's been fun. Bye. And I haven't seen, I've seen some stuff from his brother. Not, yeah. not super negative. Just, you know, my brother's a good guy, whatever. But, um, <laughs> Roseanne went, I mean, she's still not shutting up. Yeah. She, yeah. But there's a difference between, I mean, culture today and culture five minutes ago is different. Yeah. A year absolutely. ago, it's absolutely. different. And so, eight years ago or whatever, it was definitely different. So you can't, he's never said anything since. <laughs> definitely hadn't said anything, and, you know, three weeks ago. And has, from all all accounts, has been an amazing person to work with, to work for, yeah. has been, has has changed the game for Marvel. Um, like, because it's, you know, changed like six times. But, but it's, it's been... A super amazing person. Yeah, he hasn't shown a, um, a history of being this type of person. Again, that's the difference between him and Roseanne. Roseanne has been this way for since the show was on the first time. Right, right. She was getting in right. trouble for saying things and doing things. And, you know, he's had a history since then of not and, doing and, that stuff. So. And the thing that, the, uh, you know, I've said and done some things when I was younger... And by younger, I mean 22, 27, 35, 40. You know, I, I've done and said stuff in my past that I've gone back and said, well, that was dumb. But but I shouldn't be fired from a job or I shouldn't be flambasted because everybody has done stupid shit. Everybody has done stupid The Pope has done stupid shit. <laughs> The last one was a fucking Nazi. I mean, come on. I mean, it's it's like it's it's just this this I'm better than you because I'm on a keyboard and you have no idea who I am kind of thing is really what's what, that's really what I'm more upset about is that there's been no credibility, no consequences for people who go out and bring up shit. Twenty. Um. What's the what was the the Food Network TV host who said the N-word like 20 years ago on... Oh, in a, not Rachel Ray. Um, and got fired for it. Yeah. You know, what, three or four years ago, she got fired for saying the N-word at a party with a bunch of people 20 years ago. Yeah. I mean, what... We're... Okay. Well, so we're instant... You know, we, we can't grow as people. You know, right. we can't never change. And right. Everything. Well, and it came out that the guy that release this has got some stuff in his past on his twitter account too so right huh. right so um what happened today is um the main cast pratt uh zaldana karen gillian michael rucker uh, the entire uh, dave batista it's like from the day from the moment it was posted that, that james gunn had been fired dave batista has been on there saying you were all dumb yeah. Like this guy's amazing. Yeah. Now he's a little biased because he kind of gave him, you know, it kind of gave <laughs> right. him his break, yeah. you know, and kind of yeah. thing. But I, I, but the entire cast got together, wrote this pretty long, scathing letter, open letter to Disney and 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 Marvel, saying he should not be fired for doing something that didn't really mean anything ten years ago. Or eight years ago, or whatever right. it ended up being, when it's already been addressed, right? And they didn't come out and directly say we're not doing it without them, but they made it kind of. I feel they made it known that they're not happy. Yeah. Oh, definitely. And called out like the internet and like and the and the the. the, the morality police for lack of a better term yep. and 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 disney for or specifically disney but not you know a, a indirectly marvel too for just firing them on the spot it's like right. there was no like right like we've already had this talk it came up again because of this ding dong right and and so i i just it's like it's like terrorism right like the united states government has a a stance that they won't um, negotiate with terrorists, right, right? Right. And it's it it's kind of the same thing. It's like so now the internet knows that they can do this shit and get these people 
fired and so you've opened pandora's box right you have made it so that they're all going to be out there looking for all the stuff to get some actor director that they don't like they they don't like because he didn't give them an autograph or or you know she you know right or they just don't agree with their their politics or the movies that they do or right you know like the the asian girl and i don't know what her name is that did Uh, star uh, wars oh uh uh, Kelly Marie Tran. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they didn't like her character. her character. And so flamed her to the point where she quit social media. You know, yeah. it's, it's the same. It's like, but this is, this has got like a corporate, you know, a corporation that has come in and said, yeah, we're going to bend to your a will. A corporation who has a much dirtier past than yeah. what James Gunn does. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying that the people that were with Disney when all that stuff stuff happened are still there. But right, because it was like 60 years ago right, or but, 70 years ago. But the ago, idea, but. if you do the history of Disney and Walt Disney specifically, like it's some bad, like worse stuff. Yeah. Than what James Gunn said in a tweet trying to be funny. Yep. I, and I just, and I just. I Walt s- Disney was not a good person. <laughs> not no, not even close. Um, but uh, I said it, I I posted it to Instagram and Twitter so and, uh, and Facebook. Uh, and so if you want to read it, and if it's all over the place, yeah. Um, and and it, but I said, um, your value as a person is weighed by the people who defend you when it's bad. Yeah. And yep. and and all these all of these people, Chris Pratt has a ton of pull in Hollywood right now. Zoe Zaldano is the only person to have two billion dollar movies in her pocket. Two two billion dollar movies in her pocket, uh, and, and and so like she, like these people have weight to what they say. Yeah. And I I'm not saying like like they're being political activists and stuff like that kind of weight. I'm talking about they have Hollywood weight. Yeah. And if they all came in and said we're not doing this movie, we're not doing Volume Three unless we have James Gunn. Yeah. I don't think they will do that. But it's totally a sports move to hold out yeah, to and, get what you and, want. And them coming out and saying that is going to potentially, probably, allow more people in Hollywood who feel the same to come out and say the same right, thing. Right, right. A lot of people... I'm not going to work for Disney. Right. Because a a lot of people have come out before the letter came out today, uh, over the last two weeks. A lot of people, both in the media and... Actors, producers, people of right. the, with power in Hollywood have all come out supporting James Gunn, and right. and not and not not directly like being like going after uh, Disney and saying that you you know you're the worst company ever, but telling them like this is wrong. You've made a wrong decision. Yeah, and you've made a wrong decision on a snap decision because it's been proven that this is not who he is. Right, because anymore. you. Ne- negotiated with a terrorist. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's totally what <laughs> it's it is. The truth. Yeah. And the other thing that I want to talk about with this the, with this subject and it has to deal with social media is one of the reasons why I like being on Instagram and Facebook, Twitter I'm still not really a fan of, but <laughs> Instagram and Twitter is that famous people, quote unquote, famous people gives them an outlet to reach out to their fans, right? And and interact with them. And when s- bullshit like this happens, or with Kelly Marie Tran, or stuff that happened, um, like Kitty Sackhoff was talking about something today with her one-on-one with Christian Harloff, the stuff that happened to her, and and um, uh, Daisy Ridley, and uh, like all these people who are trying just to ha- be cool with their fans are getting toasted for different things for whatever reasons. Yeah, it's gonna eliminate them from doing that stuff, and I yeah. just. Like fucking five, you could have three million people. And what was the what was the example today? Uh, Christian Christian Harloff was talking about this today with Katie Sackoff in their one on one, and Christian said, "So if you're in a room of a hundred people, at least one of those people are an asshole, <laughs> right. or or a dick, or an, or a jerk, or whatever. Like at, at least one in that room. Okay, so what if there's a thousand? What if there's Ten thousand. Right. There's a hundred thousand. Whatever. So you get this vocal minority who get on there and just flame people for doing stuff. Right. And to what end? 
right? If you don't like somebody as an actor or director or producer or whatever, uh, whatever happened to speaking with your pocketbook? I mean, if I'm Tom Cruise, because he's coming up here soon. If I'm Tom Cruise. He's so hot right now. He is so hot right now. Um, if I'm <laughs> Tom Cruise 55. and people blame me on social media, I'm like, I don't give a shit. I'm worth a billion dollars. Right. Don't right. go to my movies. That's going to affect me more than you talking about me on social media. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I, that's one of the things that we talked about when we started this channel was was the trolls that are on the Internet. I'm sorry. And I want to, I'm going to say this out loud, and I probably shouldn't, but I don't fucking care. I'm not afraid of anybody on the internet. I'm just not. I'm not afraid of somebody getting on and being a complete douchebag. Do I know everything? No. When I do a trailer reaction and I'm trying to watch something and hear something and try to form thought as it's happening, yeah. and I don't know everything, I, I, and, and I screw up, and somebody gets on and says, you're a fucking idiot. You've never seen Clone Wars? Okay, no, I haven't seen Clone Wars. By the way, I have four kids and six grandkids. Yeah. Guess what? I have a life too. And and I don't I don't live in my mom's basement. I, right. <laughs> Just saying. But but if somebody wants to get on and flame me, fine, flame me. I don't care. Like I I'm not afraid but, of you. But you're not going to listen to what they have to say. I'm if not... somebody gets on and gives you um you know, a valid criticism. I, hey, cool. And I, I didn't try think about my that. best to get on there and say, you know what? You're right. If it's valid criticism, I'll get on, you know, you know what? Right. I have, I have, I have read the Ahsoka book. I need to go back and reread it. Cause I don't remember that part or I need to d watch clone wars or I need to go read the, the, um, girl in the spider's web book or, you know, that kind of stuff. Like that, that's, that's fair criticism. Somebody getting on and saying you're, you know, your eyes are just going in two different directions and you're uh, <laughs> fucking ugly and you have no idea what you're talking about and how the fuck dare you get on my internet and you clicked on the fucking video. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I didn't force you to like, I didn't like, so held you down. I was like, you're going to watch this. <laughs> you know, I just, I just, I, I'm living rent free in somebody's head. Ugh, it's so awesome living rent free in somebody's head. So what it comes down to is the, my question now is, do you think he gets rehired? I don't know. I don't know. Would you would you take the job back if you were James Gunn and they and Disney I came would, back? If if I was James Gunn to prove that I'm the bigger person, I would take the job back. I would make an awesome movie and then I would say I'm done with Disney and then go do something else and prove do Belco experiment too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> go do something else with somebody else and and move on <laughs> go do justice league and show them how to do it right <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I i want him to be rehired i'm wishing that he's rehired i feel the momentum right now if you take a general temperature of how people are reacting online i i think it would be accepted that he is coming back but I just I, I I just don't think Disney I don't think Disney's gonna come back and say, you know what, our bad. Fuck you know, we're sorry. Come on yeah, back. And it's, just, I don't think they're uh, yeah. I don't think they're I, gonna do that. I don't so know. um but if I was James Gunn, I would be like just like she said, go in there, blow the doors off the fucking building and then walk out like Yep. <laughs> Peace out, home skillet. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Where uh what's Abby's thing? Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha all right, so that's our thoughts on James Gunn. We're going to talk about some cool stuff now. Um, I want to talk about Mission Impossible first because that's fresher in our head. Okay. <laughs> uh, we we went and saw Mission Impossible Fallout on Thursday night, on opening night. Um, we have a full review. I'll tag it at the end of this movie. Or this movie. I do that every time. <laughs> the end of the big show, I'll tag it on. Uh, uh, just general, like, everybody's saying pretty much what we have said. Yep, yeah. It's really good. Yep. Um, a little bit ABC story. It doesn't yep. matter. It's awesome. Go see it. Go see it in Dolby. Go see it in IMAX. Like go. It's shot really well. It just yeah it's, yeah. Um, it made sixty one point five million dollars this weekend. It's the highest grossing um, Mission Impossible movie 
and it's the second highest grossing Tom Cruise opening uh, behind War of the Worlds, and War of the Worlds only beat it like by five or six million dollars or wow. something like that. I kind of feel like it's going to be one of those sleepers, like it's going to continue it's going to have legs yeah it'll have like a 40 percent drop because everybody's talked about it this week yeah and it'll have a 40 percent drop next week and what it's going against uh christopher robbins so right. so it's right counter programming to that so it might even win next weekend yeah too. yeah it might and and you probably and you're getting into august um meg is like the only really big thing i can think of in august and then it's gonna kind of you know it's it's going to be around for a while. It will yeah. be in mid-September, and it's still in the top 10. Yeah. Like, freaking, like, Deadpool 2 finally dropped out of the top 10 last <laughs> week. Jesus Christ. Yeah. I don't know what... Um, That's cool. Everything else got crushed. Mamma Mia 2 had, like, a 70% drop or something like that. Um, Incredibles is still wrecking in millions and millions of dollars. Teen, uh, Teen Titans Go to the Movies made $10 million, so it made its production money back in the first weekend. Um, so yeah, it was just, but Mission Impossible is worth the theater process, like theater, going to the theater. Yeah. It is worth going. Yes. Uh, and, uh, movies like that you want to see, especially if Tom Cruise is willing to make it like that. And it's just <laughs> like, like, yeah, it's. <laughs> It Tom Cruise is forty. He can't keep possibly keep doing this. Yeah. Tom Cruise is forty three. He can't possibly keep doing this. Tom if, Cruise is fifty. He's gonna be eighty and yeah. still jumping off buildings. Uh, it's a really fun watch. Uh, Cinema Wins on YouTube did all of the Mission Impossible movies, yeah. and it's kind of cool to see him kind of like. And he gets the Rogue Nation, and he's like making fun of himself, like how he yeah. he's thirty eight. He can't do this anymore. He's forty three. He can't do this. You know, so yeah, it's the. Yeah. But that's a really fun watch. Um, we also want to also went and saw Equalizer two, and that was on Tuesday. So um, some shits happened. Since, we've like seen four movies since then. <laughs> so uh, so we're gonna do our best to do a quick non spoiler review. Yeah. Since we haven't really done one. Yep. Go. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I liked it better than him. I don't know. We haven't talked about it since we first saw yeah. it, really. So when we first left, um, I I liked it. I enjoyed it. Um, he was like, eh, eh. Um, it is not the first one. Um, it is. It's a different story. Right, it's a different style. It's the same. It's not a revenge story this time. It's it. It is a revenge story this time. I mean, it's yeah. It's a it's revenge just, story. It's, it's not more a... of a spy revenge story than the first one was. Yeah, like, the first one yeah. was like a vigilante ver version of of revenge. Story. Yeah, you learn a lot more about. Um, I can't remember his name in the movie. Denzel Washington's character. <laughs> The Equalizer. You learn a lot more about his backstory. Um, you know, and if you've seen the first one, you kind of understand what that means, like like the things that happened. Yeah. Um, yeah. I thought that it was, I thought it was more action-y, <laughs> if that's a word, than the it's, first one. The first one has a real kind of... Um, even build in the first 20 30 minutes yeah this one is a much more of a slower build to get to the action stuff and then once the action kind of gets going it's much more actiony and that yeah kind of thing yeah than the first one and i appreciated i think i talked about this on the way home that I, I appreciated that um and they we noticed this again with mission impossible fallout that you you almost feel like you've seen everything in the in, in the, the trailers. trailers, yeah, but they either mix it up. So, like in in Fallout, there there was a couple scenes where you still saw that scene, but you saw it from a different angle, right? And right. it was the same thing in Equalizer Two. There was some stuff that um, just just wasn't in the movie, <laughs> and right. you're like, oh, right. okay, I thought I'd seen that, or it was it was shot differently, or whatever. Um, so that you, or there was more to it than um, right, right. just that one part. So I appreciated that. My uh my initial reaction to the movie was um I felt it was um uh, a little basic 
like the story itself I felt was a little basic. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I went and saw Mission Impossible and it was again the story was a little basic, but I I had more fun with Mission Impossible Fallout than I did with Equalizer. Mm-hmm. I think it's maybe yeah. that um uh I struggled with the final set piece. Um I just, and I thought it was cool. I thought it was different. And maybe if I go and see it again, maybe it'll be a little bit of a different kind of thought. Um, but I just felt that it was the idea was cool. The execution is what I wasn't happy with, I think, is the best way to put okay. it. Um, there's also one storyline in there that I just. I, it's a cool storyline and it makes you get teary um, at the end. But I don't think they either wrapped it up the right way or I don't see where it's needed. It's that that story's already kind of told in different aspects of the rest of the movie. And so I I, I just I I just felt that there was like one maybe we one too many storylines or 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 do we have to spend so much time going back and showing he's fucking badass we know he's a badass go look at what he did in the first one like yeah. it's like almost like they did this movie for people who oh yeah equalizer everybody said that was good well they spent the first 45 minutes showing you why that movie was good yeah they just reintroduced everything again and i still had fun i still enjoyed it but i just i just felt like it was kind of it, it missed a little bit more than i think yeah. i wanted it to yeah i I don't think it was as good as the first one, um, and, but I I feel like it's because it was different, at least for me, right? because it was different, so different than the first one that that's why I don't... I really liked the flow and the just kind of the concept yeah, behind the yeah. first one. And, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to watch it like 17 more times, but... Yeah. Because <laughs> it, it's it it's uh, there's some really cool fun action pieces and stuff like that yeah, in it yeah. and and you really like you really get Denzel Washington's character you really understand like hmm. where he comes from and why he is the way he is and yeah. stuff like that yep um overall score um I think a three um, I didn't I didn't like I said I didn't not like it I liked it okay like three seven or two seven five is kind of right. what I'm thinking just a little and just it, the first equalizer, I think I give like a three five or something like that. So it's not like a, it's a world beater. Yeah. And we gave Mission Impossible like what four two four, five. Four two five. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. So so just yeah. to kind of give you an idea, and uh, and Infinity War is a perfect movie. Um, <laughs> so that was uh, our thoughts on Equalizer two. We're gonna do one more story. We're gonna skip that one. Um, and the reason we're talking this one is because I'm wearing this shirt. <laughs> Uh, Talking about Star Wars. Uh, so last week, um, when all the James Gunn stuff happened, and then we had all the freaking Disney stuff, uh, Star Wars popped their head up and went, "Hey, we're making a movie. Here's all the people in it. Bye." <laughs> and wa- <laughs> and wandered off. Like that was. <laughs> it's pretty much what it was. It was yeah. <laughs> Everybody's like, "Wait, wait a minute. <laughs> how 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 is?" How are you in this movie? I, I want to You're get, dead. But, but, uh, t- uh, so filming for the movie starts on August 1, which is Tomorrow. Wednesday? Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 31 days it's, in July. It's, uh, we're in those months where it, they never fucking end. Um, <laughs> so August 1st, they start filming at Pinewood Studios in London because that's where all Star Wars is pretty yes. much filmed. Um, Abrams is directing again. Yay. Uh, Chris Terrio helped him s- uh, co-write the 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 screenplay um everybody from the from the new cast is coming back including billy lord um joining the cast um richard e grant carrie russell um naomi aki aki um who um there's no word on what any of these characters are going to be um somebody posted a picture of the thrawn um Timothy Zahn book Thrawn. I actually have the poster with Richard Grant. With Richard Grant. <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, I we've we've been talking who would play Thrawn the entire time they brought Thrawn in, back into canon. He 
after seeing him is the doctor in Logan and yeah. he's in Doctor Who yeah. and he oh he could be Thrawn. Oh, he could be Thrawn. Except does the time work? Well, that's the problem is because when uh, – spoilers for Rebels. The end of Rebels, him and Ezra get warped by uh, the space whales to we don't know. And then the post credit scene um, is after the Battle of Endor, Sabine and Ahsoka go looking for Ezra. So, and Thrawn is um, Mithorian, Mithorian, Myth- something like that. Uh, he's a, a known race within the Star Wars universe, but there's not no tr- known about them because they're an outer rim. Okay. kind of thing okay. so there's no saying on how old he actually okay. is going to be or right. whatever um i i'm i just got my credit from um audible today f- to do thrawn alliance which is thrawn and anakin and thrawn and darth vader doing stuff together <sighs> um <laughs> uh so it him as thrawn would make sense yeah. the timeline kind of works he's kind of the right age for that so it's all kind of yeah. maybe yeah um uh, Carrie Russell, everybody says is going to be Mary Jane. Uh, she's not going to be Mary Jane. Um, I, I I don't know how that's all going to work out. It's going to be very interesting. Uh, Mark Hamill is going to be in the new one uh, in episode nine. So we are going to get Force Ghost Luke. Would make complete sense. Um, Anthony Daniels um, has to be in it because there is nobody else who can play C-3PO. No. Um, and uh, the story that we were the first... That's right. We said it. <laughs> we were the first to speculate responsibly. Uh, Billy D. Williams is going to be Lando Calrissian. Right. Um, now, a lot of people are saying that he should have been in the last one, but the way they told the story in the last one, the it it's like they would have shoehorned like him a, in. It's there like a day or t- at the most between the end of the last one and the beginning of the yeah. uh, of the yeah. uh, between Force Awakens. Uh, like they they're like essentially right next to each other. Yeah. And the reason you know that is because at the end of Force Awakens, Ray's standing there with the lightsaber, and at the beginning of Last Jedi, right. Luke is taking this guy. Right. So there's no way to really force Lando in there, right. even for the Han. But now they've talked about, now whether this is what's going to happen, but they had talked about that this will be like, Nine months in the future. So I've heard like everything from nine months to three to five years. Oh, okay. So there's there is going to be a time jump here. Right. Um, and a lot of that time jump makes sense for the story. Right, because there's, there's like five of them left. Right, right. So right. now... They have one ship. There's 14 of them. Yeah. They are the Rebellion. You're just going to watch them float around the the universe trying to find people to... And, and it's not <laughs> like the First Order is like doing well either. The supremacy has been... Damaged or destroyed. Yeah. Snoke is gone. Yeah. Um, uh, Kylo is, you know, now in charge. He's supreme leader. Hux is trying to kill him behind his back. You right. know, there's all this stuff. And oh, by the way, Hux just got his ass kicked by a ghost. Right. And er, Kylo got his ass kicked by a ghost. And yeah. so he's in full, like, I'm like off the rails crazy. So they have to rebuild. So it's going to be really interesting about how they how they do all that and how they tell that story. Yep. Um, the other big news that came out of this is Carrie Fisher's going to be in the movie. Yep. And they're going to use unused scenes from the previous two movies to put her in. Um, now, was she was supposed to be a much more... So it was Han's story was supposed to be Force Awakens. Right. It was supposed to be Luke's story in, in The Last Jedi. And then the last one was supposed to be Carrie's story. Leia's story. And... Uh, and so that's kind of how they were going. So they're going to have to change how that is, but right. she's still going to be a major character. And they already kind of had set up Poe being kind of the leader of the rebellion, the, rebellion, the yeah. resistance, or whatever yeah. they're going to call themselves at this point in time. Yeah. Um, so a lot of maybe hologram talking and and she's off at one end of the universe, or galaxy yeah. trying to get help. And, yeah, that's and, a- and you know, kind of th- that would kind of make some sense. That way you don't have to. You know, change your costumes too much. Cause sh- wonder if they're gonna kill her off, because they killed Han and then they killed Luke. I think that was kind of maybe the plan. I, I, I think that was maybe kind of the plan until Carrie died, and and it, it, but 
Ryan Johnson's story is kind of separate from The Force Awakens, and 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 so I I just I'm wondering how they're gonna do it. Now a lot of people said that they're gonna kill her off screen. This this way, I don't think they're gonna do that. This way, with having you know, like using old edited pieces and stuff like that. Well, they're not gonna kill her on screen using the old pieces because it. I doubt they well, filmed that. What I mean by off screen is in the in the in the in the crawl, you know. Oh yeah. And G- General Leia, General Leia has has died, yeah. and the yeah. rebellion is yeah. in shambles. You know, instead of doing that, they'll do it in the movie itself. Blow up the planet she's uh, on. Yeah, or yeah. Um, Maybe. Uh, so I'm super. I'm super excited. I really like the Last Jedi. Um, in fact, I've been wanting to go back and rewatch it, but we've been trying to catch up on everything else. Um, I, I just, I'm sure we'll hear stuff and see set photos and we'll get all that stuff and, and celebrations in April next year. So we'll get a trailer there and stuff like that. And, and everybody don't get preconceived notions in your head and then go to the movie and be completely disappointed. Speculate responsibly. <laughs> Four centers trying to tell you speculate responsibly. That's. Right. That's fair. Right. So that's this week's big show. That's what our thoughts were. Really big shoe. The really big shoe. Um, I got to find that. Oh, I wonder if I can find that. <laughs> There's got to be some kind. I don't know. I'll, I'll have to look for it. Sure. Uh, tell us your thoughts. Have you seen Mission Impossible Fallout? Have you seen uh, Equalizer 2? Are you excited about the cast and Carrie Fisher and how they're going to do everything for, for Episode 9? Really, what we want to know is your opinion on the James Gunn stuff. Do you feel that we are out of line saying that we are Groot and we back James Gunn? Or is there no coming back from what he said? We would like to hear your opinion and all the other stuff that's going on in pop culture, movie, TV, comic, everything news. Um, I'm still upset that we weren't in London. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're going to be there. If we would have known, we would have gone. Uh <laughs> Christopher Eccleston was at a con. I I know. I know. I saw the pictures. <sighs> Anyways. So tell us what you thought of this episode and everything else that's going on in pop culture right now. Uh, like this video. And like I said earlier, please subscribe to our channel and share with all your friends. You can get a hold of us, too, on social media. We are a Pop Culture Cult on Facebook, Pop Culture Cult 1 on Instagram. And we're at Pop underscore Cult 1 on Twitter. You can also follow us on the Stardust app where you get to download it for free. Watch everything you want to watch, and then do the little thirty-second um, reviews on it, and it's kind of fun. And uh, <laughs> I'm trying to. We're getting. We're getting. We're like three away from five hundred. So come on, guys, help <laughs> us out. Download it. Follow us first. Until the next up. Ep- Until the next big shoe. <laughs> Good night. Now.